Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the start of week number 10, the last week of competition for the EU World Smite World Championship qualifiers, the regional qualifiers. And we're going to be coming in here to the first matchup of today. The brackets are posted up online for esports.smitegame.com. If you want to head over there and check out the lineups as we see fit and as we move on forward, we're starting with a round of 16 matchup today. But today is a pretty momentous day, right? Because we finally have finished off the qualifiers. We're on our way over to the regionals. We're going to be yep. moving forward as well into the future to look towards some bigger, bigger, and better things uh, coming along in the pipeline. But of course, I'm joined today by Hindu Man. How you doing, my friend? I'm not too bad. I'm, I'm hyped. This is the day I've been waiting for. Like, NA yesterday was like a warm-up for the occasion of today, Dry Bear. Like, the teams that are involved, how close it is for even third spot oh, is possibly going to be stolen away today from um, Team Coast, formerly known as Worth. And so the games today are hype. Are hype. Well, yeah, of course, we have Cloud9 and TSM already locked in. I mean, they're so far ahead in the seeding points, there's no possible way that they could be knocked out here. They're, all, they're both going to be comp competing today as well. Just, of course, that the $1,000 is still on the line. Everything is still available, but you're exactly right. I mean, we have Team Coast Blue and SK Gaming still fighting for their spot, and even an I-5 is around the same amount of points as well, uh, depending on how things go. Now, granted, if I-5 wants this, they pretty much have to make it to the Grand Finals in order to spin this all the way up. I mean, there's no other way to look at it. They have to make the Grand Finals, and realistically, they have to make it first if they want to make it, but they certainly they could take fourth slot and make it to, uh, or even third slot, actually. Um, they could make it to the uh, the There's regionals as well. SK There's... is kind of floating on that fourth slot where I-5 is, you know, tickling their little, te their little toesies there at the bottom. So, I mean, there's so much depth. To oh, EU yeah. as it stands right now. I mean, NA was, was uh, you know, there's a possibility of five teams, whereas EU, we've got seven, eight different teams that could possibly make their way in. So definitely a very strong showing so far. Um, so the first matchup we're going to be watching here today, guys, is going to be uh, Big, Big Boys. Boys versus Team Bully. Um, now, this is eighth seed versus ninth seed, so definitely a very strong match to start with. Like I mentioned, this is going to be a round of 16 to start with. So if you're looking at the brackets right now, uh, round of 16 is going to be the first one after the bye round um, there. And it's going to be the, towards the top, uh, Team Bullies versus uh, Big Boys. Now, Big Boys has been around for a while. They definitely do very well. They, they haven't really made it all the way to the end. But you can see by them being 8th seed, it's more of the fact that they've just been here every week and they make it to round of 8 almost every time, you know, exactly, towards yeah. 16. They play very well. So this is their chance to, sign, to shine. It is, but at the same time, Team Bully Dry Bear started to just sneak out of the woodwork, made up for, of some really good players overall that we've seen on other teams before. And last week, they beat Worth Gaming for now Team Coast Blue and gave Team Coast Blue this possibility of going out of the land qualified just because of right. what Team Bully did to them last week. So Team Bully are no slouches. And Cloud9, if they want to keep that number one spot this week and go into the land with the number one spot, they might have to face Team Bully if Bully can beat through the boys this week. That's a big if indeed. And so we're going to be hopping into the match pretty shortly here as the big stage does start up. Uh, and you're exactly right. I mean, there, uh, there's a lot of people that are now feeling regret for what they've done in the previous yeah. weeks, right? I mean, yeah. Even I-5, there were two, three weeks in a row where they just did nothing but experiment. I remember one match where I-5, they were in the round of eight. They ran... Naja Osiris long lane with That's a right. mage jungle and it was just so far out there that they got beat by a, a team that was way seated way lower than them and ended yep. up losing that round in round of eight and then of course lost out a lot of seeding points they possibly could have used to be in a slot that's better than fifth slot right now. They are in fifth seed. They can move up, but we'll see how it works out. So we're on the pick stage already here for the bullies and big boys. Osiris is banned out right away. Looks like bullies does not want to deal with that one. In response, it's going to be Loki and Loki's on the rise. Loki is on the rise, and he's been on the rise for a while, even not just in North America, because North America, we saw him more in the jungle, especially from someone like Lazis on Dignitas, sure. picking him up. However, on the EQ side, he's been a predominant solo laner. The likes of Game Hunter, the likes of NQ, time and time again, have been picking him up. So it's not a surprise to see the rest of EU following suit now and making sure Loki does not become available. Loki gone, Aphrodite gone as well. The bully's not wanted to deal with the, the goddess of love. Kuma Karn is still available, and... <laughs> There you go. I mean, this character, up. he just has to go. You just can't. If, if you're second pick, you cannot let Kuma Karn go. I'm not sure, Dry. CC like, is so strong. It is strong, but like so many teams now are starting to just ignore the Kuma Karn and just leaving him available sure. all the time. They're not They're not picking him. They're not backing banning him. But Rum. in this game right now, Garnus is available. Rum. Uh, oh, Rum. Uh, uh, Rum. okay. Rum's in. I'm hyped for Ram. I, I love this god. I think he's a great addition to the lineup. But that is going to allow Yarnus through for big boys and Artemis Yarnus lane. Sorry, Artemis Yarnus on the same team. Nice combination of high damage. 
character, and I, the best thing about Rom coming out is there's still strong characters like Artemis around. And I, I personally value Artemis higher than Rom, uh, just because she actually has a little bit more damage and, and a little more u utility than just Rom. Uh, but Rom is just so good at boxing, and his his lane control is great. One of the best things about Rom is that he can sit in lane all day long. His one does not cost mana, and he can control the lane while never having to retreat. Um, Artemis will need that blue buff, but to the same point, um, I don't see why they're picking Artemis this early, considering the fact that they've already locked in Rom. Um, so Hercules is going to be swapped out Hercules. here. Uh, Gian Giannis is going to be the selection. That's a production fault right there. That's actually not Artemis. That is actually Giannis in the be top Giannis right corner. So it's Giannis. Giannis Hercules there um, on the top right corner. Now cross over to Bully to see what they want to go with. Um, Hercules is kind of ambiguous, right? Because he could be support. He could be jungle. Yeah. He could be solo. Um, it looks like they're going to call the bluff here and possibly just pick up Athena um, and just see what they're going to do with Hercules. And they could be running him in the solo lane. But a very interesting progression of picking here for uh, the bullies. Athena is one of these picks up. If they do go for Athena, actually, we're going to have a bit of an issue. But Athena is one of these gods Drybed, that started to rise up now that people are realizing how much her global presence can influence these games. We saw this with the shielded, shielded teleport as well, Drybed coming out last week from Cloud9 and in response to TSM picking it up, that people are starting to realize that being able to get across the map very, very quickly can be very, very effective and cause a lot of yes. issues for teams to deal with. Yes. You know, I, I was always. I was always shocked when Athena fell out of the meta. I, there was no real reason for it. I felt like people just didn't want to listen to her voice anymore. Or <laughs> you yeah, suck stop. She didn't show up a party I'm, I'm late not, not and gonna. got drunk and didn't clean up after she left. I mean, I, I don't know what it was that happened because Athena has always yeah. been good. I mean, there was a point in time where Athena was the top pick, top band guardian uh, to go with. Uh, of course, this is pre-warrior support meta. Uh, but you know, as it stands right now, I'm just I'm, I'm glad to see Athena coming back. I don't think there was anything real Me wrong too. with her when she came back. I mean, she does have this weird transition between her using Taunt. I mean, Taunt probably is one of the strongest initiation tools that we oh. have. Um, you know, if you can get it on four Blink, members, I mean, yeah, can she can like dash forward, members. Taunt, you can kill two people instantly, um, big AoE stuns, I and mean, there's so much you could do with it. I think uh, Athena is very undervalued here, so Athena is going to be hovered on um, for the boys waiting to see what they're going to select after this. Giannis and Hercules together already locked in for big boys. If they want to go through something else, they're going to need now, uh, as far as their last pick before the next banning phase, they'll, they're going to want something, uh, you know, powerful here. They already yeah. have Rom on the left side. Athena's probably going to be the one that's going to be locked in for this team. Um, they were looking at possibly uh, rolling with a uh, jungler, maybe. Um, I mean, there's a lot of available characters here, and I think the fact that they roll... So there's a Mercury. Uh, Mercury! Mer I can see them locked this in. This, there's no reason not to. There it is. So Rom, so Athena, Mercury together. Mercury is just... He's, he's doing so well now that I'm not really surprised to see him being picked up in the first picking phase. Yeah, being Artemis. picked up. And you can see instant response from big boys. They have to pick Artemis here because they showed it earlier, Dry Ben. If they don't pick it now, right. it's going to get banned out in the counterban phase. So, not a surprise to see that. But going back to Rom and Athena, now because Rom has such good wave clear overall, he can just farm and play very safe in that lane. Athena can roam a lot more. And if he does get into trouble, Defender of Olympus, back to his lane, right. defend him. And he also, he obviously can use that um, Astral Barrage as well just to go to the sky to give him those five seconds for Athena to get in there and help protect him. Yeah, also allows the uh, protection to while he's going up into the air as well. And, uh, you know, the biggest yeah. thing about Rom is that he's just so good with basic attacks. I mean, if you get close to Rom, and even characters like Vamana, Hercules, that are very durable, have to be careful how long they're standing next to Rom because he's just right. so good at boxing. Uh, he has, you know, the great cripple. He's got the slow. He has the penetration at multiple targets. I mean, he just has so much in his kit that allows him to sit still and shoot arrows at people and sure. do tons of damage. Well, he's Chalk is going to be locked in here. He is the only god, though, Rom, of the Hunters, where he only relies on basic attacks. None of his other kit does anything else other than basic attacks. So if you can land basic attacks, Rom is going to be very, very strong. However, if you struggle with it, you're going to have difficulty really getting the best out of that god. Whereas the likes of Artemis, even things like Amuz and Carb, who, you know, Amuz and Carb and Neath, who have other ways to clear the wave, um, are going to have an easier time if you're not fantastic oh, at it. basic attacks. Look at it. Oh, Do it, really? please. I love Vulcan. I love you. I love you, lock They've it in, lock it, it in, lock it in, lock it in, lock it in, Hercules, yeah, do it. Hopefully lock oh, it in. Well, I, I, just I, that, I personally dude. believe, oh, wow. okay. Not just that, but tear. Wow. Now, I personally believe that Vulcan is very underrated as a character. I think he's very underutilized, and I, I think the biggest thing is that people are are hoping for that big one shot on the ultimate, right? Yeah. You want to do that full range. I mean, if you do like a medium or even close range ultimate the Vulcan, his kit is so good that it supports it well. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do in the lane to control almost any mage you're up against um, in the mid lane as well and, and more towards uh, the long lane. But I think there's a lot of great things you do with Vulcan. I think he's a very undervalued character. I'm glad to see him being played here. We'll see how well he can be played. 
Tyr being locked in is interesting. Now, again, Tyr, another character that got hit pretty hard in that Warrior restructuring patch. Um, I don't believe that he is as bad as people say he is, but he certainly is not top pick, top ban, and he is going to be that last kind of pick kind of thing um, with very minimal influence, but certainly is very useful still. I, I agree, Dry Bear. Basically, with, with that one pick of um, Tyr there, I think he is very, very strong still. He's just not as high level and, and as strong as what he used to be, and there's more picks that are better than him overall, and that's why we don't see him as much in the meta right now. Now, one thing I will say about the Bullies lineup as it stands right now is they do have a lot of damage. They got Vulcan, Mercury, and Rom, all very high damage and character, high burst characters. Um, so Tyr is going to be the kind of character that just sets up for those burst characters to get in, involved in there. Here, of course, he's got the knockup. Excuse me. He's got the knock up. He's got the the control, the grab. He also has a little bit of the d disruption. Um, but other than that, I mean, when you look at Tier, he doesn't have the knock up on his guard stance power, uh, the guard stance fearless anymore. So he's just going to run into people. Um, realistically, the only CC that he has is going to be the uh, the assault stance fearless, which is going to knock, grab him, then knock him up again, uh, and possibly even bounce them up. Um, the problem with that is that his damage is relatively moderate at best, and so if you only have one CC and your damage isn't that great, um, it's not really going to make that big of a difference. So the biggest thing that Tyr is going to look for here is he's going to be standing in front of the, the, the enemy gods. He's going to be trying to just block them physically. And this is, a, this is something that supports do all the time. They just want to be present. They just get in your face and they force you to attack them. They just stand in front of you and they look at you until you attack them because you have to make a mental decision to walk around them or go around them in some way because they're being so aggressive and confrontational. And that's something that Tyr can do here. He can just get in front of Artemis. He can get in front of Giannis and say, hey, attack me, attack me, don't look at anyone else, uh, just be the jealous girlfriend there, and then try to jump in front of him, and he can do a lot with that, but again, his CC is low, his damage is going to be moderate, and his tankiness is moderate as well, so I'm surprised he tier picked up at all. I mean, tankiness moderate, like you say, but he, they needed something on the front line, did the bullies, for this composition here, because they've got Athena there, but they needed someone else to go along with it, because Vulcan's not going to want to really have to be a front line. Obviously, he's going to go in range for his backfires, but at the same time, Dre, he's not going to be very tanky at all. Ram's going to sit very far back and just try and use, shoot sure. those astral strikes all the way through the enemy team. And if you leave Athena alone, if she gets picked off, then the rest of the team's got to realistically scatter, because you can't rely on a Mercury to really, you know, go in there and be the forefront and focus because he'll just drop in seconds. Yeah, that's right. But honestly, uh, you know, I, I would love to see a Sun Wukong here in place of the tier. I think you would do a lot more. You have the single target stun. You have the AoE slow. Um, of course, you have the ultimate that gets him, you know, it's like a get out of jail free card, uh, which allows him to get really close up in the front lines, take a lot of damage. Ult, jump down and take a lot more damage again. Um, to the same token, uh, I think that they could also run with like an Amir solo. Uh, would put another magical on the team, but also have that CC effect and also some decent amount of damage. I think there's a lot of things they could run solo that would be more tanky and more useful at protecting Mercury. Mercury, Vulcan, and Rom than just Tyr as it stands right now. Uh, the last pick for the big boys is looking like it's Habwa. They're hovering um, it. They, I, you know, they had a bit of an issue, but I'm, I, I, I'm not surprised. One, well, the one thing, I mean, Habwa is very strong, but the one thing I'm trying to look, work out from big boys right now, Driver, is the fact that Hercules and Chuck on the same team, one of them is jungling. Which one do you expect it to be? Because that's the big question here. I think it's Chuck. Yeah, there's going to be Chuck on that one. Sure. And honestly, you could also jungle Hobwa. I mean, jungle Hobwa also works very, very well. So, because Chuck you know, can support and Hercules can support. And, right. You know, so it right. could be either or of those. And then the other one can go into the jungle. I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe it's going to be Hercules support. I mean, they did pick well, that one very, very early. The thing I like about Artemis Chalk is the harass damage. They have so much with the Thunderstrike and the Volley, but I think that Hercules is a much better support oh, than Chalk is. Chalk is just a lot more aggressive. That does a lot more damage. I think the biggest thing for big boys here is I would imagine them to run, um, you know, Artemis Hercules and then either Chalk solo Hobwa jungle or Hobwa solo Chalk jungle. Um, they could run both. I think there's definitely value in, in either, uh, considering the fact that across the way they have a tier solo, which is pretty easy to keep locked down. Um, the jungle is going to be Mercury. So. I mean, honestly, because Mercury's over there, they may want to put Hob on the solo just because he's too squishy. And if, if Mercury ever invades, it's going to be a tough time for either of them. It's kind of like a damage race there. I agree, uh, yeah. But, you know, some great lineups here. Robbing being out is a great choice. Geb being banned out, great choice. A lot of damage on either side. A lot of two hyper carries on either side as well. You got Rom, Mercury, Artemis, Hobwa. Uh, Vulcan's a good mage. Giannis is incredibly damaging. So, yeah, I'm curious to see how this match is going to run through. Um, looks like we're all ready to get back into the game as it loads up right now. We're with the spectator delay. We're going to cut to a brief break, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. It's week number 10 of the Smite World Championship Regional Qualifiers. Week number 10, the last week of competition for these qualifiers. And we're going to cut to a brief break. We'll be right back as the game does continue. 
Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back and get ready to hop in the first matchup of the day. Today is going to be Team Bully versus Big Boys. Get ready to roll out here as you wait for this to hop up on screen. We're underwater. European Regional Qualifier is what you're watching, as you can see on screen. And there we go into the match, getting ready to roll on out here. Today is going to be a very momentous day. This is the day we decide who makes it into the Regional and who does not. A lot of teams on the chop block right now. Rafina. It's looking to knock up on top of Hobwa here, initiating on top of Tier. Looking for the shot here. The slow comes up for Artemis, slowing them out, but no commitment from the right side. Hercules looking for damage. Looks like it's going to be a bit of a wash, Hindu. Looks like a bit of a watch of the time. I'm not sure if I'm synced up with you. This game actually at the moment on this one, Dry Bear, you have 34 seconds, 33, 32. Hold on. Are we synced? I think you're ahead of me. I am too. 22, 21. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Oh, Dry Bear, predicting from the future again. You've been talking to Tim. I have. Tim is a good guy. He, he, gives, you, he gives you a little bit of, you know future insight of what's about to happen in this game? I know everything. Do you? I know who's winning the Super Bowl. Really? Who, who's winning this week? That's more important. I can't tell you that. Why not? That's spoilers. I want to put bets nope. on and win money. Nope. Nope. Oh, nope. Okay. Ain't happening, brother. So, into the match we go, guys. It's going to be Raw Manathena on the left side of the map up against Hercules and Artemis. Giannis is going to be in the mid lane on the side of Big Boys. For Team Bully, they're going to be running a Vulcan middle to see how that works out for them. On the right side of the map, we're going to have a Mercury jungle up against a Habwa jungle. And the solo lane mm. will be Tyr versus Chalk. A very strong matchup indeed. A lot of damage across the board. Uh, Mercury and Habwa in, the, in opposing jungles means that literally anyone anywhere has the possibility of dying at any time because there's so much damage that comes out from that. At any time. Now, the one thing about the Hercules support we're going to see in this game as well, Dry Bear, is against the Rom, it's not the most effective just because he's going to have that role available to him. That rolling assault is going to come in handy to get him out of the situation. And actually, he can do it just before the driving strike comes out if he can time it perfectly. Optics should be able to get out of dodge if things do get bad from him in that lane. So keep an eye on that one plays out and see if the Earthbreakers do make an influence in this one. You know, I, honestly, I think they will. I, and there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, control on that long lane. I think Rom's going to be able to push this lane up. I think Artemis is going to be able to push this lane up. I think one of the, the biggest claim to fame for Artemis in the laning phase is her ability to harass. She has that suppress the insolent volley that comes out. Does not only good damage on a low cooldown, but also has a good slow component attached to it. So you hit by it, you either have to retreat away from the wave or kind of back up here. So far, you can see the big boys is pushed back into a corner here on the left side of the map. Artemis is kind of backpedaling as much as she's going forward. Uh, they push onto the diff. Offensive, but it seems like they're clearing the wave quite effectively. Looking for that Earthbreaker from Hercules to see if they can start something up. Yeah, I mean, Optics in this lane now, you can see a very small lead that he's trying to gather momentum with by continuing to push it into the tower over and over again. He does have great wave clear in the early stages just because he's got that strike. But there's an Earthbreaker, but great time from Athena. Gonna die. She's gonna drop very low, though. But for the time being, back away. And overall, this is pretty much an even trade. It's one of the hardest things about uh, duo lanes in general, and you'll see this in multiple MOBAs as well, is the fact that, you know, what target you decide to initiate on changes the fight drastically. You can see that because they initiated on Hercules there, especially with Mitigate Wounds active, they actually lost out in the damage component because Artemis was able to harass Athena down to about 20% HP and Optics a lot of harassment as well. Again, they're going on Hercules, that leaves Artemis free to do whatever she will with the targets here, so you kind of throw in those shots there, do as much damage as she can. So the more they go on Hercules, the more damage they're going to take, but if they kill Hercules, these Artemis will be pushed back entirely. So we'll see what they said to go with. Honestly, my personal preference is going for the Hunter over the, the support, um, but it's always tough to be on how much damage they Ooh. have. Hob was here, and Athena's going home. This could spell bad news for Optics. It could be, but with Athena going back up, he's going to play this very safe anyway, so Town's really wasting his time on her boy. He's not going to find an opportunity. More than likely, Optics can't really get into the wave, and you can see the big boy's actually pushing this one up, and Town has to take a bit of experience to hit level 5 just to make sure it was worthwhile at least trying to rotate over there, Dry Bear, and look for something. Looks like they're able to clear their waves, stacking up those astral arrows, clear the waves as fast as he possibly can. Uh, one, let's all take a brief moment of silence for the death of the jungle pot meta. I, I think it could still happen. I'm, no. I'm just... Nope. I, I it's don't not, know. It's not going to happen. Don't Don't boom me, jump. Pot. That's it. Jumping in, look for DeWall. It's not going to find it. The boar Good comes ball. out of the trap as Good well. Yeah, pop his ultimate get on out there pretty easily. Now look oh, for the turn around. Damage coming out. Artemis might let me look for this. There goes the Earth Shaker. Not going to land. Just oh, barely missing the unstable Vortex. Optus escaping by the skin of his teeth as the third best comes through and defends him up there. Uh, it, hashtag Giannis. Giannis did make a good play, didn't pay off overall though, and in the end of the day, you know, Hartis got caught out of position, but then turned it around in the end after using the Sonic Boom to disengage Dry and picked up the kill for himself. 
got that, and that's exactly what they needed, honestly. They're going to see the first blood of the side T bullet, and that's going to let them control this left side lane a lot easier. Hog downs out into the mid lane, looking for the ultimate from Hobwa. If a Vulcan wasn't there, he would have gone for it, but he's playing the yeah, same here. Does not want to go for that hit. Hercules already back up into the lane in the mid lane here. Left side being pushed up very heavily. Optics popping up that Astro Arrow to clear the wave. As far as the in-hand gold goes, Optics sitting at 1,300. Um, not quite enough to finish off the, the gloves entirely, but getting very close. Yeah, very close indeed. So Optics just trying to stay in lane as long as possible to make sure that when he, on his next trip back, hopefully he can afford the whole thing. Now we'll find out when he goes back. He can. So he's got a very small lead over Artemis in this lane now, Driver. Because he's going to start stacking sooner, it means that when they trade, he should technically come out on top because he'll have a little bit more lifesteal and a little bit more damage. Yeah, that's going to help out a lot. And he's also going to be ahead in stacks. You look across the way, Dezez is on tier 2 of the Spike Gauntlet. That cursed gauntlet there. Um, looking at the in-hand gold, Artemis is sitting at 378. So just has, uh, you know, about four or 500 gold to go before she's able to finish that up. And we'll have to control the lane in a way where she's safe to go back first before she gets the gauntlet. Uh, but, you know, Optic's going to be 10 to 20 stacks ahead of her by the time that happens. That's going to help so much. Nice roll to avoid the Earthbreak on the left side. So we have a quick look at the right hand side. We're going to see Moff Moffley on that chalk. Actually going for the Witchblade as a first item. Just looking to try and put that aura on the enemy team overall. I mean, with a Mercury, with a Rom, with a Tear, all those do require auto attacks to actually use their right. abilities. So it's going to really affect the team when it comes to the team fights, as well as it gives you some great stats. Well, I think it's more so for the landing phase. I mean, obviously, getting a Witchblade for the team you're up against is great. Mercury and Rom especially are going to suffer very heavily from that. They rely heavily on their attack speed. Even with their stims, of course, uh, the stim will be scaling up a very small number, so it's a little bit easier there. Uh, Rom, of Ooh. course, is a stim, and so does Mercury. Re uh, left side, Ooh. Mercury and Hobwa are in the area. It looks like Mercury is ready to pop his ultimate and respond as soon as Hobwa goes in. There goes the step forward. Not going to be able to find it. Uh, and I, I know... I'm strange. I'm a little, a little uh, curious to see why he's taking that approach. I mean, it is the safer approach to come from the center, but is the lowest chance of success because you're going to come from in front of them. They're going to spot you out and they're going to roll back and get away. Um, so I don't know why he's spending time coming from that angle instead of farming or not just coming through and poking and getting out. Not surprising he's not gone for the mid lane, trying to focus Vulcan with Janus because, you know, with Habwa and Janus together, the pull and the amount of damage those two can put out together, they could really cause an issue for Vulcan in that mid lane, especially if he's overextended. They could pretty much burst him down in half a second. Right side, Moffy is taking a lot of damage here from Tyr as he pushes the wave up. Right dropping quite low. Vulcan is in the area, possibly looking for an ultimate across the wave. Oh, Town's down caught! Instead. Down, crush away, gonna hit Mercury through the ultimate. There's the Earthshaker, that'll do it! Yannos is coming through the ultimate Vortex, is not gonna land though. Yannos is looking for the kill, not gonna be able to find it. He doesn't have the speed. He'll need a portal, but it looks like it's on cooldown right now. Chalk was heading over for the help. Not gonna be necessary as it looks like Mercury has made it out alive. Earthbreaker, gonna oh, barely close. miss there as Mercury escapes by the skin of his teeth yet again. And now mid comes spawn once again, left hand side gets taken by Athena already. Right side due to spawn soon, I see who gets them because at the moment, the last three mid camps that have spawned overall driver have gone in favor of the bullies as you see the walls on that, um, on that Hercules actually trying to put pressure on mid. Now he's going to rotate round, but the minions are going to give full vision of that. He just wanted oh, to put those minions are so helpful. Yeah, They're I so mean... helpful. That's all they wanted. They just wanted to make sure that Vulcan was pushed back to his tower so they cleared out the mid camp. Vulcan's going to take this opportunity to go back to the base. I like this choice. It means that he's not going to gain anything. The, the wave is gone. Looking right side. For right side. I don't see him getting this one, uh, especially with that sun coming oh, out the there. Ult. He'd have to ult in to get it, but even then, he probably uh, wouldn't have enough damage. You'd have to ult in and use the dash forward in order to hit it, unless he's able to position his ultimate perfectly. So, and, you know, Emilito is not going to go for it. He doesn't want to give that up, especially in the solo lane. Uh, not only that, but of course, the Witchblade is done now, so full physical protection from him, plus the movement speed and attack speed, and the minus attack speed for tier there. So it's going to help a lot in the harassment. So we're two, sorry, we're currently nearly eight minutes into this game. A gold leave of 1,400 has been applied for bullies however experience is also in their favorite 900 a lot of wards on the map as well though dry bear and they start oh, to yeah. contend around the gold fury right now but artemis could get caught out of position here his optics and the sonic boom's going to get charged there's a taunt as well but the beads are used well but it's not going to be enough to save his life as optics goes down great driving strike as from the backside we see Yannis coming in he to use it after the Earthbreaker, though. The hardest hard. is dropping low. Giannis wants the shot here. No ultimate is available. No distance. And I believe everyone on Team Bull is going to be A-OK -okay here. The Mercury ultimate missed on the Artemis. It looks like the slow from Rom missed as well. But due to good control and the taunt from Athena was able to pull Artemis back into the fight and get that kill. Great play by Team Bully. Now they're standing 3-0 up against Big Boy. Surprisingly enough, they're doing very, very well today. And on their way to moving into the next Ooh, round. Nishi's on the left side. There's a taunt after the Earthbreaker. And Rom with that assault roll able to get out very, very easily. Now Mercury 
Mercury's here. Look for the grab. Gonna miss the special delivery as well. Now punching up with maximum velocity. Looking for Dewell's. Not gonna be able to find it here as Woiler can't actually do anything about it. He's gonna have to back off here. Hubble was on his way over, but De De Waffles is gonna go down there yet again. It's a tough choice. He's also going for damaging boots. Which is gonna right hurt side. Him a lot in the wrong line. Tuck's in a lot of trouble here. He's trying to live as Emelito dives the tower, looking for the kill. I don't think he's going to find it. Chat's going to make it away for now. But going to that fight, going back to that fight, that the Athena, the third best playing Athena right now, those taunts have been on point time and time again, Dry Bear. Every single time the Earthbreaker has landed from Hercules onto Optics, he's immediately taunted Hercules off, so the driving strike can't follow up. It's really good, consistent play from him. Mid lane, do damage here on Woiler. Huge amount. Look for the Earthshaker. Earth Shaker. Not going to find it very close range there. Especially with the movement speed that Giannis has after stepping through the threshold. Not going to grab anything up. Looks like Chalk is also going for a creepy curse here across the way. Not much healing can be found. In fact, very little. Some on uh, tier, and that's going to be the only uh, kit that has it. More a lifesteal. So could just be going for the uh, crippling oh, curse. Hercules. Jumping on Hercules. The punch. The hit. He pops his ultimate. There's the rock. He's going to miss trouble. entirely, actually. And De Waffles is on that very, very slow descent slope. Oh, like, no, 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 good Sonic Boom coming out there. The boar is out, but it's not going to do much as the bomb comes down from the second Ow. best. This is a gold theory I've ever seen. Him? When Hubba comes through, looking for the crush wave, not going to find a good dash from Mercury. The damage there needs a knock. I'm going to miss it. Town missing the last shot. Oh, the axe. kill, But the axe will finish him off there. Tau going to Optics is on fire. Looking for the fall. Yes. In the backside, Athena is here looking for the taunt as well. The best is going for as the fight continues. The fight does continue, and you can see Moffy trying to survive, but the taunt's going to delay him jumping to his axe, but look at Emelito. He was in position waiting for him. Dunks down with the Lawbringer. Can he continue on with the Fearless? He can, you know, and Optic's right behind him. Optic's going to go Rob. to the sky with the Spirit Barrage. You're going to see where he went Rob. to. Or is he? He missed it. He missed all three, but the meatball over the top not going to survive it, and DeWall's back in the fight once again. It all started with his death. Fortunately enough, Ram couldn't see over that little brush there, so he couldn't tell if Chalk was there or not. He got told by his team, I believe, that he went that right. That was huge. This is a great torrent from Chalk. Saved his life, realistically, because Ram was able to hit those shots pretty easily. The Gold Fury attempt was completed and defended there by Big Boy. They even got their first kill of the game on the Mercury by throwing that Chalk Axe over the wall. Hobwam missing the ultimate and also missing the Water Spout to finish off the Mercury, but luckily enough, Chalk was there with a the long distance Axe to finish him off there. Left side looking for Chalk, gonna find Double it. Don't see them Initiating on this one. Uh, Artemis says no bore though, so they could definitely do something Herx with here. it. Mercury is here. Does he have an ultimate available? Looks like he does oh, not. No Sonic Boom available, but not necessary as Herc Herc is just so squishy right now. He is on that slow, slow descent. Look for yeah. the whole Sonic oh, Boom. Oh, there's the hit. There's the volley. There's the damage, and Dez goes down. A double kill on the left side for Team Bully. Team Bully is very apropos here as they are just bullying big boys. Giannis is here. Hobwa, what's he going to do? Tix is trying to outplay himself here. He's going to get dropped through the portal after falling, and there's a lot of damage coming out from the unstable Vortex, and Town and Voila will be able to pick this one up easily. Optix chose to run path there, but can Vulcan turn it around? Oh, the meatball backfire combo. My man, the Vulcan. Love that dude. Coming in with a nice knockup into a backfire and had the turret there just for safekeeping. Right side, we see some rest coming out between the two uh, solo laners. Pretty durable now as it stands. Looks like uh, Tier's actually the worst end of this. As the damage is pretty high from Chalk. The Witchblade is going to make a big difference for them. As it looks like Mystical Mail was picked up by Emelito. Uh, less damage potential coming out from that. But the abilities are what's shining right now as Emelito brings Moffley down to a very low amount of HP. Mid lane, the mid cap on the left side is about to respawn. Herc is in the area, but... Herc is just spending so much time rotating around now that it looks like he's going he's gonna to continue to fall behind. He's a level behind at the moment over Athena. He's been the main focus of the enemy team. He's not going to be worth much gold nowadays, Dry Bear, if he does die again. But it's a good idea to try and keep him down so he can't get his mitigate wounds going online. He generally maxed the driving strike earlier, and then after the driving strike, you go for the mitigate wounds and become that tanky front line for your team that's pretty much undying. We saw that of Half Devil last week. I think the main issue right now is going to be Artemis. You can see Artemis at 5,100 gold across the way. Optics is at 6,000. So about 900 gold between the Hunters. Right side initiation here coming on Herc. He's by himself again. Athena ultimately coming out here. Driving strike goes through. Through. Sonic oh, Boom, there's the grab, there's the damage, and again, Hurt goes down. He is just the target they want, and they're going to keep abusing him until he decides to play a little safer. And then once again, Big Boy's trying to rotate in late with his through space and time. Not going to find anything again as the Vortex does connect only onto Athena, but only half of that one. So it's 11 to 2 right now, Dry Bear. Gold difference, 3,000 in favor of Bullies, as well as 5,500 experience. And still no Gold Fury been taken. Bullies just want to fight. They do, and they're doing a great job at it. 
and honestly keep them down. Then just come down on Tau and grab them up here. I don't see Tear coming to this one. Vulcan is in the area. The Vulcan ultimate is available as well as Tear's ultimate. Uh, so they will have the Lawbringer and the Earthshaker together. There we uh, go. Right side, they push heavily go, here. Tower. Uh, Tear could take this tower out. Could take the tower out, but he's going to just keep trading. But meanwhile, left hand side, you're going to see the three men of bullies here, the jungle and the duo lane, take down that Gold Fury. There was no war coverage there at all for big boys. Unfortunately, they had no clue that was going on. And even if they did, could they really afford it in this position? They are quite far behind. Forcing the Chalk ultimate on the right side, forcing the tier ultimate, not really commit to that one. Um, there's an issue coming out on Giannis in the mid lane. Vulcan's doing a great job of keeping this guy down. Level 13 versus level 15. Vulcan is right in charge here. Uncivil Vortex is going to miss oh. in the mid lane there. Unfortunately, so Vulcan is going to take very minimal damage from oh. that up in the air. Look at the shot. Not going to find it. He found that, two was, that was a pipe dream right there. He it hit two was. out of three, though. But if the third one hit, I don't think it would have killed him, but he would have oh. dropped some solo. Oh, the Vulcan ultimate was available. They probably possibly could have shot that out. I think that was just a miscoordination between the team. They could have also had a uh, damage, thin yeah. ultimate to prime on Vulcan to dive the tower. Uh, if they really wanted that, they could have gone for it. It seemed like the only person that wanted it was Optics. So going back to the, just looking at how the game's gone so far, Mercury's gone straight away for a Deathbringer after boot. He, this is why we saw that crit on Hercules earlier on. He's so confident in his play drive there that he's gone straight for into a Deathbringer, looking for the extra damage, especially on the major looks. Well, the thing is, Hercules is very far behind. Artemis is very far behind. Hobwa's not doing so hot either. And so, realistically, their damage to come from their abilities and not necessarily their items. Because you see, they're barely finishing items. And oh, this is why. Hobwa rushed Polynomicon. Mercury says, okay, that's my chance to skip all the items I want. Polynomicon dealing 50% bonus magical power at low level, at, at max rank now, means this item is not early game anymore. I don't understand why people are buying this so early. Um, and realistically, Town. it does have a decent amount of damage, but you know, it, it's a tough item to swing because he's not going to be dealing much damage with his abilities, and his basic attacks won't do much either. He's kind of look for tier here on the left side. Good ultimate from tier oh. to force him out. Double kill on the left side as he's forcing. Giannis wants it even more, though. Needs a he's single shot to do it. Hop was going to get him. It's tier for two. Tier for two, indeed, is the last side, but there is a great Earthshaker. Is he going to connect? No, he's not overall, and now straight through the portal, he's going to go, but into dodge. He's in trouble now, because Artis is here. There's a ton. Barrage is up. One miss. Second one hits from Artis. He's going to find the third. No, he's not, as now Mulfi has to retreat back to his tower on that chuck, and Town's in trouble. Oh, jumping on the top. There goes the hit. Crush Wave comes out, but they just need a little more damage. There goes the mage you look, and Yahabwa did indeed look there and they knocked out. It looks like Moffley's all by himself in the mid lane. Top's gonna come out. There goes a great creeping curse to slow them down, making sure no one commits to that fight entirely. Hercules is back into the fight, but level 10 is he, and he is not in a good spot here. He's not taking enough to keep his team alive, and his team doesn't do enough damage to thwart the aggression from Team Bully, oh, and they recognize that they're 15 and 3 right now at 16 minutes. They are currently 7,000. 500 gold behind and they decide you know what we're not going to make it through this round we're going to let this one slide through so team bully after 16 minutes of competition will be moving on into the round of eight and one thing to mention as well this was seed eight versus seed nine these teams were yeah. right next to each other in seeding points but team bully came out today to play and that's exactly what they did, oh, they did. and i think they deserved it they did, and then looking forward, Dry Bear, to what's coming up next with the challenges and the possibility of this last two spots in land to be fought for in the next couple of weeks. Right. There's a chance bullies could make that, you know? At the same time, so could big boys if they step up the game with their rotations, which seem very lackluster in that game, to say the least. But both these teams are one, wants to be looking for as time goes on. No, I mean, look at the stats right now. It was a strong matchup here. 15-3, 31 was the total. Uh, 14 boy. They played phenomenally today and certainly deserved this win. They're moving on into round of eight. Look at the rest of bracket uh, just to see exactly still what's going. going on here. Uh, everything's still going. It looks like, though, Exposed Secrets did defeat the Musketeers in the round of 16. Moving on to the round of eight. So two teams in the round of eight as it stands right now. Uh, back over. Drunken Master was defeated by Rough Gaming. Moving forward. Surprise enough, Rough Gaming is seated 20th. And we'll be moving on to face off against SK Gaming there. It looks like I5 has been teamed up with Team Illusion as they beat out Team Cats. We have uh, Generation 5 losing to IQ over XP. We also have at the bottom, Vindicate is going to be X Frequency at the bottom. Revival Esports will be off Canis Latinicus. 
with Tenicus, uh, and moving on to face off against Agilitas. Definitely a lot of strong teams, and some newer yeah. teams as well, still coming in to compete, which is very surprising there. Don't forget, guys, tomorrow is the last day. Uh, tomorrow is when the event ends. Fort Romerica, the donation to American Red Cross, will be happening $2 for a purchase of the skin, as well as the Shibalanke skin bundle. If you're a fan of the World Cup, or you're just a fan of uh, football in general, or soccer football. as it is here in the United States, definitely a very good bundle football. pickup. You get the Ward skin, which is exclusive. You can only get it through this bundle here. It is the little foot kicking the little foot, uh, football uh, the ward there as well as the two Shivalanke skins that come with it American footballer and football Jaguar um, definitely a, a strong bundle to pick up there guys if you are wondering how you can talk to your teammates pick up curse voice now available just launched actually on Friday it is a free sessioning system much like Skype but much much more condensed and simplified what it'll let you do is actually start a session with your teammates when you join with a match all five players in your match lobby will be in one voice session voice over IP is free and as soon as you lock in it'll Coach update Jones. your avatar to what god you're playing so everyone knows who's talking it's very simple it's very excellent but also like you mentioned hindu your first yes. game you play with it you get 200 gems you also get entered into a drawing for a giveaway for 8,000 gems and an alienware x51 Crazy. it's a fantastic machine a lot of opportunities ahead of you as it stands right now guys we're gonna cut to a brief break we're heading to the right the next match coming up here for everyone here at uh, production and the, the people involved with the tournament and admins as well for myself and hindu man We'll see you soon.